Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. Tango here. Thank you guys for stopping by again, as always. You know, I don't even... Wait, hold on. Okay, here we go. I don't even thank you guys enough, and I should. I want to thank you guys so much for just, just being here all the time. Can I fly right through there? Zuh! Excellent. For just being here almost every episode, you guys are just you're so dedicated, and I'm so appreciative of everything you guys do. Hitting the like button, just hanging out while I make these silly videos. I just, I really, really appreciate it, guys. I really do. I just, I, it goes unspoken too long, and I must say. So thank you very much. Uh, and hopefully, I'm hoping that today, that thing is amazing. I'm at <laughs> a Mumbo Bunjoni birthday cake. What is this thing? I love it. Mumbo did that, right? I think. I, I haven't seen this episode yet. I've heard some words. Anyways, today, guys, I'm really, really hoping... <laughs> I'm getting distracted very easily by Tango Princesses now. Today, I'm hoping, is going to be a day that is going to get a lot of you guys very, very excited. Because I know I am very, very excited about today. Today is... We're going to start a project today that, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, we've been toying with for quite some time. Not toying with, but, but hinting at, alluding to for quite some time. Since the beginning of the season, I promised that I would, uh, that I would redo this certain... Uh, long-term project. Uh, pay no attention to this. This is ZF Stealing Villagers, by the way. I told him he could. Um, today, we're going to start a project that... Whew, it's got me excited. It's got me excited. And you might even say I'm I'm all tangled up with excitement. Some might say. Some might say. Some also might say that this project belongs in the gaming district because you could say it's a game. It's, it's a brain bender. It's a mind twister. It is time to start the Tangler all over again. So, those of you that have been watching me for a while, like mid last season, you remember a project I did called the Tangler? Uh, it turned out pretty good, if I do say so. I like to make games that are like puzzles uh, that really mess with your brain and, and they're hard to figure out. And the last one took most people about an hour to get through it. It's big. It's a big deal. We're going to be focusing many e uh, episodes on this and we're going to be remaking the Tangler all over again, but with completely new puzzles. I've got this spot picked out. Hold on. Can I? Oh, look at this. Ground take off. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I've got a spot here just perfect here. No, not the, not the underwater sea temple down there. This little round area right here. I got a little hole there. Now, uh, this is exactly where the Tangler, this is actually 3.0, but 2.0 to most, you guys, except you crazy old schoolers who I give the definite shout out to. Uh, Tangler 3.0 here, we're going to call it, and uh, this one, this season, is going to have a little twist. This is going to be the first one that is going to be partner-based. You're going to do the Tangler with a partner, and you will rely heavily on your partner. All the puzzles inside here are going to require two people to solve I'm excited, guys. I'm really excited. So today's goals are... We've got two two objectives today. One, I want to kind of do the entrance way here. Not not really make it look good. Just give me, like, the technical entrance of it. Uh, and we're going to have, like... It's not even going to really be the first puzzle. Just, like, a little process that is required to, to start the Tangler. And then, down here, I've got a little hole that I was working on. It's my little bat farm. <laughs> that uh, this is where the first puzzle is going to be. It's going to fit inside this box here. The first puzzle is not going to be anything super challenging. I think most people will probably solve it right away, but I think it'll be a lot of fun and it'll make the players... First of all, my goal is not to defeat the players or anything at all. My, my goal is to make them have fun, okay? I want them to feel clever. I want them to feel good about solving the puzzles, but I want it to be challenging and rewarding when you do. Any game design, those are the kind of things you want to go for. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the first puzzle be one that kind of warms them up to this partnership and gets them used to the idea of depending on each other to solve puzzles. Okay, so the entrance to the Tangler here. Nothing nothing special, nothing crazy over the top. We'll have like a little room that you can enter. This is all very temporary here. Um, you know, I'll finish this off and put better walls and stuff and everything, but uh, there's basically just going to be a book in here explaining what the Tangler is, the rules. You can't break any blocks while you're in here. You can only use the items that you're supplied. You have to take all, you know, put all your items in a chest, which will be here later on and stuff. And, I'll, you know, at, just like last season, I will decorate all this, you know, when I'm done, probably. I have some ideas for how I want to decorate this a little bit different than last season. I don't want to do the organic thing. Uh, but the to start the Tangler here, let's see. I want to do something uh, that kind of, you know, obviously it's not going to be challenging or anything, but I want it to signify 
what this is about. And it's about partnership, cooperation, and solving things together and depending on your partner to solve the puzzle. So we're just going to do a simple, uh, you know, double button press here. I want to do like one there and one over here. Okay. And again, this is all going to be closed in and stuff. But again, I don't, I don't care about this right now too much. Uh, but the idea is I want to come in here and this guy's got to press his button and the other guy has got to stand over here and press his button. Now I'm putting, I'm putting the buttons over there so that, you know, to make sure that they're not like half on, I don't want to put the button there and then they just press it here and like, what? doesn't do anything because the idea in here now is that this block right there is going to be pulled back by a piston. So let's see, one, two, and we'll put a piston there with you there. Okay, so that'll be the hole that they fall in now. Let's do the same thing over here. One, two, three, I think. Probably went back too far there. Did I forget? And there we go. Uh, yeah, just like that. That works. Okay, good and good. So those are obviously retracted now. So now we need to make them be uh, extended. So we're going to put these on like a simple little uh, AND gate here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, did I get some dust? I did get some dust. Okay. And then, yeah, of course, the rule is that all redstone has to go on iron blocks. And by the way, I'm using iron blocks, um, obviously, because they're just the easiest block for me to get. And I don't mean that in a, you know, braggy sort of way. It's just, it's just the way it is. Um, but I also like the fact that it keep it's clean. It's like, you know, those of you guys that played portal and stuff like that, those, those games, they have kind of a, almost a laboratory feel and it doesn't, it's not about the aesthetics. It's about the puzzle. And I think the white, the clean white walls keep that intact. So pretty much the entire thing is going to be decorated with white walls. Uh, all right. So we just do this, this, and this now, bam, 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 and drag this down here. Like, so they both should be extended now. And for, uh, for this to turn off, both of those torches have to turn off. Like I could come in here and press this button right here and it gonna do nothing. Let's see if I could do this. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I had it for a split second. You can see, so it works. Uh, and that'll be the entrance again. I'll put like a book or something right here with an item frame or anything. Uh, but for now, let's see here. I want to break you. Let me pick up that torch here and I want to see how far this drop is going to be here. So you'll be standing here. You hit this fall in the hole down here, down here, down here, down here. Okay. Mm, okay, so I'll have to get two drop holes in here and we're gonna start the first puzzle. Uh, I'm gonna have to put another portal from the gaming district to the nether hub. This is getting annoying. Flying back and forth every time I forget one type of block. Okay, I got enough down there now where I can at least show you how this puzzle's gonna work. And, and by show you how it's gonna work, I mean I'm not gonna actually tell you what you need to do until the end of the episode. I wanna see if you guys can figure it out as we go along. And I might do that with a lot of them anyways, but we'll see. So hit the button, fall down here, and you're gonna be in this room here, okay? Now, one of the ideas that I am I think I'm gonna do, and I don't, I don't know how long throughout the Tangler this will happen, but one of the premises, I guess you could say, of this entire thing is you are gonna have a partner, obviously, who you're working with constantly, but you're never actually gonna be able to get to him or her. You're never actually going to be able to, you know, you'll see them, but not actually be able to occupy the same space. Uh, so let's see here. How did I want to do this here? Let's do a wall here. I think I messed this up already. I sure did. All right. Let me take a few of these off here. Where's the middle of this? I think it's right, right there. I think. Yeah. Okay. We're good there. So we're going to do, I'm going to leave it open for now just so I can get through here. Let's see, we want a wall here in between the two players. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up the ceiling and everything in a little bit here. Um, just getting the kind of the mechanics in here for now. Let's see, take that up there, drop a couple of these out. Uh, this is going to be a glass wall here that is going to divide the players, okay? So one guy will drop right here, right here, thud. And the other guy is going to drop right over, right here, to this hole here, thud, on this side of glass. So you'll be staring right at each other but you won't be able to get to each other, okay? Now, here's where it starts to get interesting, okay? So you're completely isolated from your partner. We're gonna have some colored blocks here. Let's see, we're gonna do red, we're gonna have blue, we're gonna have green, some yellow, some purple, and some orange, okay? Over on this side as well, we're gonna have a red, a blue, a green, a yellow, a purple, and an orange, okay? Uh, now, let's see. Okay, right, 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 I gotta remember how this works. <laughs> uh, there's gonna be buttons on top of each of the colors here, okay? There and over here, all right? So you're gonna look at each other and be like, what are, they, what, are these, what are these blocks mean? What do these colors mean, okay? But over here, there's gonna be some staircases. Do I have stairs? I have stairs, what a bonus. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go stairs down, stairs down, stairs down, and we'll make it, we'll make it double wide and without broken idiot stairs. Okay, there we go. Uh, double wide and there'll be a wall here and everything, you know, everything will be all 
uh, trimmed out and everything, you know, it's even even the corner space there. Uh, and over here, there's going to be the same thing. Uh, and I do have more stairs. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to do some stairs here, like so. Uh, and now you're going to be into this other room on the bottom down here. And now this, likewise, is going to have a red, a blue, a green, a yellow, and a purple. Except I put those on the wrong... Did I put them on the right spot? I don't know. <laughs> I think I put them on the wrong spot. Red, purple, or blue, green colors with Tango. Yes, he may know them. Uh, did I get these? Yep, we're off by one here. What? I missed one. I missed orange. Hi, everything's fine. Orange. Good. I totally knew that. Uh, okay, so we're going to have that. Do I have any more iron blocks? I'm all out of iron blocks. All right, well, that makes things difficult. And we have these, though. Okay, the lamps. Boom, 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 and boom, and a boom. And lamps over here. Ba boom, 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 boom. And boom. And boom. Boom. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So that's pretty much the extent of what you're going to see in this puzzle here. Now, how many of you are guessing it at this point? It's not that hard of a puzzle. Okay. Like I said, I, want, I don't want this first one. I have plenty more that will be very, very difficult. This one is not one of them. I want this one to kind of get them, get them feeling the cooperative vibe and everything. So let's see here. They're going to come in here, drop in, and when they come down here, some of these lights will be on. Now, uh, let me get some more iron blocks. There we go. Everything is all tightened up now. Got the all the walls in and everything. Everything's looking good here. I had to move this in a little bit. This was off by one. I had to move everything in there and there. Uh, pay no attention to that. That's just my temporary exit to get out. Uh, and then up here now, I think right there and over here, right there. I'm gonna have trapdoors. This is uh, that's how you're gonna get out of this puzzle. When you when you succeed and pass the puzzle, those doors will open up. There'll probably be some lights or something to show you the way. And then you'll drop down here, and that'll take you to the next puzzle, which I think you'll fall yeah right right through here. So uh, this will be a hole a hole that goes down to the next puzzle there. So uh, all right, everything is done. Now we've got to do a ton of redstone behind here so the inside that what the players will see is done and work out oh, i need more areas to get in here <laughs> all right we're gonna leave that there for now just because i keep trying to go through there okay oh wait no i'm lying i'm totally lying uh yeah hi totally forgot the important part this right here is a completely opaque wall kind of an important deal right there uh so let's do na -na 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 something like that some of that 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 and this this that this that and then pretend that that is uh solid there and we'll go a couple there just for aesthetics uh, all right, so when you come downstairs, uh, you can see this, but you cannot see that over there or what's going on over there or the fact that there's a missing slab right there. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I keep hearing the guardians like 50 blocks away zapping squids constantly. It's kind of a little bit disturbing. Like, whenever I hear that sound, I usually panic and flee, but now it just it's just weird. Uh, but anyway, it's time for some redstone here. So uh, we've got these lights, we've got these colors, everything's all happy. What we want to do is make a randomizer now. Okay, so uh, we can do that in, in a few ways, but I want to make this one be a tileable one. So... We're going to go dropper there and a hopper there pointing into it. And this is a trick we've done many times. You know, you put a uh, you put a shovel and then anything that stacks to 64, okay? And what we're going to do is randomize or use the randomization of the dropper to push one item into the hopper and let the other one flow back into the dropper. And the one that's here will give off a different signal length. So comparator there and we're going to put a block there. So if the shovel is in here... Uh, because it stacks less, it's going to give off a signal length of three, which is going to go through the block and one, two, three. Uh, and then it's going to turn this torch off. Right now the light is on, obviously, so shovel will turn the torch off. If it's a whatever the other item is, in this case the button, it's only going to put a signal length of one. So it's going to stop there and the light will stay on, obviously. So that's your basic uh, randomizer. Now the cool thing here with this uh, layout here is we can actually make this completely tileable here. Like so here. Let me turn get these guys going all through there uh, Now you can see all the lights are on now, but I can go blocky 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 and compare to compare to compare to cross cross all this do that 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 and that and no subtract mode I said no subtract mode. Thank you very much. Uh, all right now we can tile these guys one two three four now most of the things I do here are gonna be uh, repeated on the other side so we're just gonna focus on one side of this build for now uh, and obviously when I'm done, everything's working here, then I will just repeat it on the other side. Uh, now I'm bleh, put some blocks back here like so. And I think I even want to do like that and like that and that, I think let's hop back, hop back up there and see what we're looking at here. Hoppy, hoppy, jump boost for the win. 
Uh, okay, some dust back here now, and I'm gonna put a block there, dust up there, and right, invert it. Okay, so now all the hoppers are locked, so theoretically whatever item was in the hopper would stay there for the comparator to read. So now all I need to do is, let's see, we'll just do, we'll just do a little bit. So we're gonna, we're gonna change this later on, but for now I will just put a button right here. So now when I do eh, okay, what that did is it, it, it fired one of the, hmm. 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 Mm. Oh, <laughs> it helps if you put the items in there. I am so smart. Uh, anyways, uh, no, don't put a button there. Eh. Uh, why did that not work? That should have worked. Do I... Hmm. Oh, this needs to be a one tick. And by one tick, I mean two ticks actually there. So what I added was a little uh, pulse limiter here. So we got a, a sticky there with a block on it pointing up. Uh, so when I press this, the repeater reads that only for the first two ticks, because that's what the repeater's at, sends the line down, inverts the torch, and that gives enough time to uh, shoot an item from the dropper into the hopper, and then one of the items will go back. So the one thing I'm actually wondering, though, is is that just going to flip-flop it every time? We'll have to see. All right, so anyways, right now I hit the button, and you can see it happens real quick, but let's see, like right now we have just purple on. I'll press it again, and wow, did that really just get all of them? It did. All right. Wow. That was a, the chances of that are really weird, but okay. Yeah. So we have shovels in every single one of these now. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, so it is pretty much random here. So we got, uh, what do we got? Red, blue, and orange on. Do it again. Now it's just red and orange. Do it again. It, you can see it's pretty much random every time here. Blue and yellow. Just green and yellow now. Now it's just red and yeah. Okay, so this is working great here. Okay, um, now for those of you wondering, the reason why this is tiled here, you'd see this like redstone mess here and think that it wouldn't work, but it's only because uh, the signal when there is a shovel, it gives off a signal length three. So only in the column where it actually is reading a shovel will it make it to the end. So it'll like a one, two, three. It will actually bleed across here, but it doesn't matter. So it's, it has to be a signal length three to hit that torch. Uh, and obviously, signal length one isn't going anywhere. So this is our basic uh, six-wide randomizer here. Uh, so we're going to need to hook this up on a clock because we want this to randomize very frequently. And I almost forgot, of course, that we're powering the bottom down there and randomizing those lights. But we also need to tell the top floor in here what is going on as well. So I did a little bit more here, extended these blocks out. That's why we have that block raised. That's why we have uh, that block there. We are powering through there to get all the bottom stuff down. But we can also send the same signal up on top there uh, and do another, uh, you know, read the randomizer up on the top floor as well. So let me just go ahead and finish this little bit here. I just wanted to see how this works here. Cover that up. A couple of repeaters in there. And this works the exact same way. So whatever signal is down below, the same signal is going to come up here. Now, of course, down here, we are inverting it with the torches. Oh, I can't get up there now. Hang on, hang on. All right, uh, but up here we're not, but we're going to be pushing it into uh, these torches here. Now, the whole objective of this, okay, you'll see those are pushing into the same block that the uh, the buttons here on. The object now is going to be to get all of these torches to turn off. So right now it's going to be like that, that, boom. I would have just won the game, or at least half the game, okay? So, uh, and then up above here, I'm trying to remember how some of this works here. We're going to have another uh, redstone line up on top of it. Let me see if I can get some of this done here quick. Uh, and then up here, I know it's getting dark and cramped in here. It's very spooky. Uh, let me throw a little bit here. So we're going to have a dust on this line here. Uh, let me put the dust there instead. Like this. Okay, so this dust is going to be powered now, no matter what, uh, if any of these torches are on. So once you do that and that, then that dust up top there will be off. And that is going to be key for knowing when the game is won. Okay, I did a little bit off camera here, and I want to add some stairs here, because obviously I don't want them to be able to see those torches. Uh, and then over here, I duplicated the entire system on this side, like I was talking about. So on both sides now, we've got the full six-wide automatic randomizer with double-layer technology and heavy fun sauce. Uh, and up here now, this is the line. Again, that line will turn off when the puzzle is completed on this side, which will turn that torch on. And what I've added on both sides now is uh, this line here. So when it goes in, it's gonna go into this uh, fairly lengthy pulse extender here and turn this light on. And I think I actually wanna do this guy here. Arbitrary, doesn't really matter. And then let's see, is that guy, okay, that torch is off. All right, so simulating when the puzzle is one now, you'll see, you'll get this. 
ding, the light will turn on and this light inside here will light up. So you'll know that, okay, we got something, progress is being made. And then when that light turns on over there, that's when the puzzle is completely done. So the redstone isn't quite done yet, but I feel like I left you guys in the dark long enough. Let's explain how this puzzle is won. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already figured it out. Again, it's not it's not a hard puzzle. It's not intended to be, but I want it to be kind of a, like I said, get the, get the gears rolling with the whole co-op thing. Uh, so again, this glass will be solid here, so you will not be able to... Uh, I get across. The players drop down here. They see these colored things. They're like, what do these do? I have no idea. Eventually, they'll go down here, and they'll see that uh, these lights are on randomly. So what they need to do is one guy needs to come down here, and the other guy needs to be up inside there at those buttons. So if that light, whatever lights are on are the buttons that his teammate up there needs to press. So he's got to come down here. In this case, he'd be like, blue and yellow. And the other guy up there would press quickly press blue and yellow, okay? Now, it, the reason we're using wooden buttons is because they automatically turn off. You know, we don't have to worry about levers and stuff and resetting the puzzle. Um, and, you know, you got to do it quick. So if you get, if you get like five lights on here, you're pretty much not going to be able to solve it. And you're going to have to wait for the lights to re-randomize, which we're going to talk about in a second here. But I do also want to mention, just like last season on the Tangler, all puzzles, and this makes them so hard, I, I, I can't stress how much difficult this, this adds to the design, but all puzzles must automatically reset themselves so that the next team that comes in will automatically be able to take the puzzle and, and start it. I don't have to come in and clean things up after everyone does it. So that's another reason why we're using wooden buttons here, so that things just that everything just resets automatically. Uh, so while they're in here, and I'm probably going to trigger it off of the trapdoor or that opening, so when they fall down, I'm probably going to start like a long clock which is going to randomize these lights. And I don't know what the timing is going to be. It's going to be short, every 10, 15 seconds, probably 15 seconds or so. I don't know, something like that. So they're going to be quick. They got to come down here and like, this player's going to be like, okay, blue and yellow. And that guy's got to press blue and yellow. And if they succeed, that light will turn on. In which case, the guy up here is got to run down here and see what he's got going on. And he's going to be like, uh, uh, red, blue, purple, or red, blue, yellow, orange. And the other guy up here now has got to go red, blue, purple, orange. And he's got to get his on, okay? And if they do that fast enough, that light will turn on. And if both lights are on, they'll have some extended time now where the puzzle is one and these trap doors will open. But the point is, I want this to be kind of a little speed challenge here. I want it to be zippy. So you're going to have to... I, I guarantee no one will come in here and do it the first time. It's going to be like, they're going to do it and be like, what's going on? They're going to press. And they're going to be like, oh, the light went out. Crap. And then they're going to realize that they've got to be much quicker. So that's the goal here. Again, you know, name the colors off on this side and then you swish rolls, pop up, and the other guy tells you what your colors are and you're done and you hop out the door. Really cool stuff, I think. So we've got the randomizer done. We've got to add the clock now to, uh, to randomize everything periodically and I think what we're gonna do is a very uh, simple and kind of old-school clock with droppers and item decay <laughs> okay the redstone is done uh, with the exception of our little 10 minute timer here that we're gonna do now uh, now this timer is here so that uh, this clock only runs 10 minutes after they come in if they can't solve this puzzle in 10 minutes they're probably in need of some serious help and it's just going to turn off and if the clock turns off that's fine it just means that the the solution stops randomizing so that it'll just become even easier at that point uh so we got all like i said all the redstone is done down here i'll explain it all in just a second you see the clock is running here uh we added this guy here to randomize uh the signal like every 20 seconds or so maybe 15 seconds i'm not sure we're going to go in there and kind of take a look at it um and then this clock also runs a line down here to randomize the other guy over here. So I move this uh, piston and pulse limiter back over to this side. Uh, you can see this will get randomized in a second. Here, 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 there we go, there we go. Piece of cake, okay. So that does that, and then, uh, like I said, all we gotta do now is add our little uh, uh, clock here, or our timer to keep the system going, okay? So this is super old school. People are gonna complain at me that I'm using this and I really don't care. Uh, so I need to put some items in here. Uh, we'll do some stone and I need to get, we'll just do whatever. Sure. Doesn't matter. Uh, all right. Let me throw some glass down here now. And what we're doing is making a little enclosure for the items to sit in. And, uh, this line right here. Okay. That's the line for when the players start the game. 
and the pistons retract and drop them in. So that torch will turn on and it's going to fire this dropper right here, like so, okay? So when it does, we're going to get like a little boop. And it's going to fire. I'm not going to be standing here to pick up the item, though. But the item is going to sit on the pressure plate there, okay? Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I messed up. This is this is a problem here. I got to I gotta redo that. But uh, there will be a torch. That, I, I had to take that out because that torch would mess up that right there. Uh, there's going to be a torch there. There's going to be justification there and there. And we'll just go repeater action there and there, okay? And the repeaters are there just to not get a signal from that torch there. But basically, if there is an item on that uh, dropper there or that dropper there, then it's going to turn off this torch here, uh, and, which it is doing right now, okay? So when I pick this up, that torch turns on and it locks the clock so that the clock won't keep running. This right here is kind of your, you know, no one's playing the game mode, so there's no constant redstone lag or anything like that. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I got items in there. I don't think this puzzle will be run more than 64 times. If it does, we obviously recruited a lot of hermits. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when it fires out, this item will sit here for five minutes. And when it decay and turn this torch off, uh, all the while it is powering that dust there. When that item decays, this torch will turn back on, which will power this dropper and fire the next item out. And we've got, let's we'll just say there's a little bit of delay there to probably make sure it doesn't, it doesn't hiccup there. That item will sit there for five minutes. So we've got a nice, very low lag, very simple 10 minute clock. Downside is it can only be run 64 times or how many items I put in here, but that, that's not going to be a problem. This puzzle's not going to be that popular. Uh, all right, so that's done there. I got to fix the redstone down there, but blah, 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 off camera. Uh, what else? Okay, up here is the uh, one more pulse extender. You can tell I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of these comparator pulse extenders. I use them constantly. Uh, but basically... That is the detector right there for, did they get that side done? That is the detector over there for, did they get that side done? And we're running both signals. Let's see, that one's coming down here, through here into this. And then that one is repeating right into here. Uh, and we have just kind of a, a, a complicated looking AND gate here. I just had to raise things up so I can draw a line underneath it. But basically, that torch will turn on when both sides are one, which will activate this uh, hefty pulse extender which will then power into this little note block, note block chain, play a, little, like, play a little ditty, and open the two trap doors, and it'll do the same thing on the other side. So I can kind of simulate that. Let's see. Do I have... I do. Levers. Okay. I can kind of simulate that by powering, like, right there, and... Uh, well, that's not the best spot. Let's do right here, actually. So that will simulate... Okay, that side is done. That, that torch would have turned off, and this right here... Doom, doom. And you can see the, uh, you can hear the little click down there. I don't know if you heard the game sound, but the trap door should be open right now. And that'll stay open for plenty of time for them to realize the trap door opened and time for them to get out of the puzzle. So, uh, it's done. Unfortunately, I can't actually test it with anyone as all of these puzzles are like, I'm not going to be able to actually test these at all. And that kind of drives me crazy. Cause like, I don't know, like I actually talked to Zed. I was like, Hey, do you want to be my dummy for all these? And he said, sure. But then I said, you know what? I want to see him actually go through this and suffer through it as well, too. So I'm not going to. So a lot of these are going to be untested. I don't know. We'll see if I can. Uh, do any of you guys want to come on and help me test? out? If you, if, you, if you do, just let me know in the comments. You know, just if you want to come on and help me test, I'd appreciate it. I could use a tester here. <laughs> uh, but I think we're done. I think we're done. This is going to be a pretty cool puzzle. Uh, let's just check the timings now for how fast these are uh, cycling here and randomizing. So let's see. Next one here, I'll kind of simulate it. I'll be like, watching down here, I'll go... Wait for it. Oh, I didn't. I got to fix the redstone. Hang on. Okay, I tweaked the redstone. Got it all working again. The clock is working. So here we go. I want to see what this would be like when this randomizes. Go. All right, so I'd be like green, orange. Boom, boom. He would do it. I would stand up here. The other guy would go down and say whatever it was he said. And then I would... Testing the time to see. That feels like... that. Okay, right. It just switched. That feels like enough time right there for the two players to like this guy will be peeking here he'll tell him he'll come up here the other guy will go down say his colors the whole thing feels like it should take less than 10 seconds so there should be plenty of time there i might even want to shorten that but we'll have to see i don't know i'll watch the first person play through it and see how well they do we may have to tighten this up a bit but that is gonna do it guys for the first puzzle in the tangler um i, I should probably put a sign on the wall or something I did that last season and put like a little teaser, like, you know, the name of the puzzle as like a clue of what to do. 
I'm not sure if you guys can think of a, what should I name this puzzle or what should I put on the sign? Just what should I name this puzzle? How about that? And I'll put it on the sign here, probably like on one of these walls or something. Let me know what you guys think this first puzzle of this season's Tangler should be called. And I can't wait. Next episode, guys, we'll probably start working on the puzzle that's going to be right after this on the one below it. Any feedback, I would definitely appreciate it on anything you saw here, the redstone, the design, whatever it is. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing for it. Uh, and, uh, that's it. That's all I got. I will see you guys next time. Later.